Okay, let's get started. So, hope you're hyped because this one is gonna be a big one. So, by now, you know how to move around. And so, if I middle click with my mouse, I am gonna snap out of the camera view. And I'm gonna be moving around in 3D space. And also, now you know that if you select an object, and then you press a command like G for grab. You can move the object, R, rotate, S, scales it, and so on, right? But today, we are going to take a look at the object interaction modes. Now, the object interaction modes are this little box that you see in the top left corner of the 3D viewport. And what this allows you to do is to switch between modes that allow you to manipulate an object in different ways. What does it mean? So, for example, right now I have my monkey head, Suzanne, selected, right? And when I try to move it, I am moving the whole mesh, the whole geometry, the whole object, okay? It's, it's acting as one entity. However, if I press tab on the keyboard, I have now entered the edit mode, okay? And you can achieve the same if you go to the drop down menu here on the top left corner and you will see that you can switch between object mode and then edit mode okay and then there are several other modes that we will eventually cover but the two main ones that you will constantly switch in between are the object mode and the edit mode and that's why you have a shortcut for it. So again, if you press tab, you can enter and exit the edit mode. So what edit modes allows you to do is to manipulate the geometry at a deeper level, at the level of faces, edges, and vertices. All right, so what I have here is a simplified version of the Suzanne monkey head that I am going to use to show you what faces, edges and vertices are and how the edit mode allows you to in fact edit those aspects of your 3D object. Okay, so once you have the object selected in object mode, which in fact is the mode that you want to use to select the different objects in your scene. Once you have that selected, you can press again tab and now you are in edit mode. And as you can see, everything is orange, which we know is the color for the selection, right? So this is telling me that every single face in the object right now is selected. And again, if I click away, like just in the object mode, now everything is deselected and I no longer see the orange overlay. So a 3D object is made of information and that information is used to represent it visually into faces, which are these little squares that you are seeing that when arranged in space make out the object that you look at. Now, each face is made of edges. And right now you are watching me select the single edges. And of course, edges are defined by points. So if I take out an edge, okay, you will see that it is comprised of two points 
that are connected. And the points themselves can also exist alone. And so what I've done here in the edit mode is that I have moved between faces, edges, and vertices. The way you do that is by toggling between these three icons that are vertex select, edge select, and face select. However, since you are going to do this continuously, you have shortcut keys for those, and that's one, two, and three. And as you can see, as I type one, two, and three, the respective icon gets highlighted, and also something happens in the visualization of the mesh in the edit mode. So when you're pressed on three, and you are in the face selection mode, everything is gonna look like this, where the priority is in visualizing the faces. And it's gonna look pretty much the same under edge selection, okay? With the difference that now when you're clicking, you are selecting individual edges. And once you press one, now you're gonna see the individual vertices and you are uh, able to select them, okay? Now, since you have learned how to move the objects as a global entity, you can pretty much guess that you can use the same commands to move the individual faces, edges, and vertices. So right now I have this face selected, which I have created by selecting one and duplicating it with the shift D command that we saw in the previous uh, video. And now that I have the face selected, I can do all the usual commands like G for grab, G and an axis to move something along one axis, R to rotate, S to scale, and so on. Okay, so that takes care of introducing you to the object interaction modes, the object mode and the edit mode, which again, you can switch between them using tab. And now we are gonna review a few little things that we left behind in previous videos. Number one, if you remember, when we were in object mode and we were reviewing the icons over here on the top right corner, this one, the toggle x-ray was grayed out. However, if you go into edit mode, you will see that it becomes available. And what you can do now is toggle it and you're entering x-ray mode, which allows you to see through the geometry, see through the object and see or select, if you want to, parts of the mesh that are behind that are occluded in your view okay so right now i am selecting this edge that is over here which i normally could not select because it is not in my field of view so one last thing about the toggle x-ray is that if you activate it and you step out of the edit mode and then go back to solid you will remain in an x-ray mode that allows you to see through the mesh, okay? In fact, when you are in the solid viewport shading, you can toggle between it and you can actually see that it's making a change. However, in material preview, it doesn't make a change. Next up is the pivot point. So we introduced the pivot point in the previous video and we understood that it is sort of the handle of the object. It is the point from which the object gets manipulated. And so right now, if I rotate this head, it's rotating around that point. However, you are able to affect the behavior and the relevance of the pivot point from this icon over here in the center. And you can see that you have several different options 
among which there is one that it's called active element. So if you remember in one of the first few videos, I introduced you to the concept of the active element or the active selection, which is that if you select multiple objects, like for example, this phases, you can select multiple, but only one can be the active one. And so the active one usually is the last one that you select, which in this case is this face over here. And I know that because it is slightly brighter than the other ones. And the saying goes, if I were to be selecting edges, as you can see, the white one now is the active one and the yellow ones are selected. And this is a little bit like when in object mode, you select multiple objects and you have a darker orange outline around all the selected objects, but the active one has the bright orange one, okay? So the brightest color usually tells you that that element is the active one and the latest to have been selected. Now, since we switched over here the transform pivot point from median to active element. When I rotate, now everything is going to rotate based on the last selected uh, entity, which could be a vertices, an edge, or a face. Okay, so let's try one more time. If I select multiple vertices, and then I select this one, this one is now the active one, the latest to have been selected. And if I rotate, everything rotates around it and becomes my handle to make uh, transformations to the points that I have selected. Okay, we have covered a whole lot in this video. And there's one more thing that I hinted at in the last video which is, what is this thing over here? This weird red and white thing that is just everywhere, right? So that thing is called a 3D cursor. And the 3D cursor kind of works in tandem with the pivot point. At the beginning, uh, when you're learning the software, I remember it was super annoying for me because I don't know, it felt like it was just in the way. And also in previous versions of Blender, it was set up in a way that where you would like click around and it would move like this. And then it felt like always like if it was out of place. But what does it do? Well, it it works in tandem with the pivot point, allowing you to do things like this. You could select this mesh and then press Shift S to bring up um, this pie menu, okay? And then you could move the cursor to the selected and that will move the cursor, the 3D cursor to the pivot point of the selected object. Conversely, you can move the 3D cursor around with shift right click and with an object selected, you can go to object, set origin, and then origin to 3D cursor. And now the pivot point of this object is over here where the 3D cursor is. And guess what? If now I rotate an object, it rotates based on that point in space, okay? So the 3D cursor and the pivot points are separate entities, but they do work in tandem. They allow you to make tricks and let them influence each other. All right, so that wraps it up for this video. We definitely have covered a lot of things but you are just a few more videos from the really fun and rewarding stuff. So keep going and I'll see you in the next video.